Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS All in One. And today I'm gonna to show you how to install a universal bidet. This particular one is called the Clear Rear and it is available from getaclearrear.com. And I'll make sure to put that link in the description. I'm also gonna be testing this thing out and reviewing it as well. So this bidet is considered universal because it does work with most of your standard toilets that are in use in the USA. For myself, I did end up ordering two of these for 90 bucks and you do save a little bit of money if you order more than one. As far as the shipping goes, it took about a month for them to get here, so it wasn't crazy fast shipping, but you have to expect some delays with what's happening in the world right now. And these kits do come with everything you need to get these installed and up and running, providing your existing plumbing is in good shape. These kits include the bidet itself, a water line, and an adapter. And there's no electricity involved because these are just water powered. And here's a look at the underside of the bidet. It does feature two different water jets. One's gonna be for the regular rinse and the other is for the female rinse. And it does come with some very straightforward, easy to follow installation instructions. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. For the first step, I'm gonna turn off the water supply to the toilet, then flush the toilet to get rid of the remaining water pressure. And I would like to mention for most of your common toilet setups, the shutoff valve will be located towards the floor. As you can see here, my valve is built into the water line, so it is a little bit different setup. With more of a traditional setup, it'll look something like this with the valve on the bottom. But no matter what your setup looks like, the connection point on your toilet should still be the same size. So now it's time to unhook the water line from the toilet, and you may need a pair of pliers to get this connection loose. Now it's time to remove the toilet seat, and the toilet seats can attach a variety of different ways, but normally it's very simple to get these removed. They usually just attach with two different bolts and nuts, and sometimes there's a little cover you have to pop up to get access to the bolt head. So my toilet seat's removed and it's time to install the bidet. And these do have some slots that are adjustable so you can line those up with the holes on the toilet bowl. So these slots can turn left or right and this allows you to get the proper placement for your bidet. And as far as the proper placement goes, what I prefer to do is mount the bidet as far back as possible. That way it's mostly covered by the toilet seat and you're also less likely to make a mess on it the farther back it's located. Once you figure out where you want to have it located, it's time to reinstall the toilet seat. And that will just install right on top of the bidet. So you just run those bolts through the toilet seat and the bidet at the same time, and this will secure both of them to the toilet bowl. Now it's time to hook up the water connections, and here's a look at the adapter. And this does come with a rubber washer, and you do want to make sure that's on the inside of this adapter before connecting it. And this adapter is going to allow you to hook up the water supply coming into it, plus it has an outlet to hook up your bidet. So this will just thread right onto the bottom of the toilet, and you want to make sure you have that outlet pointed towards the front of the toilet. And you want to hand tighten this as much as you can to start with. Then you can use a pair of channel lock pliers to finish the job, but make sure not to over tighten the connections and just get these snug. Now it's time to hook up the water line that comes included with the kit. This is going to be a double ended 3 8 water line and one end is going to connect here. And once again, you want to just hand tighten this to start with, get that as tight as you can, then use a pair of pliers to go ahead and tighten it some more. And just make sure not to get too carried away, otherwise you might break the connections. Now we're going to connect the other end to the bidet, and it's going to be located right here. So we're going to hand tighten this again. And with this connection, this one's a lot more fragile, so you want to be super careful when you're tightening this connection to not go too tight. Just get this one snug, and if you have to tighten it more later on, you can, but just take it easy so you don't break that connection. Now it's time to hook up the water supply, and that will thread right onto the bottom of the adapter right here. And once again, just go ahead and hand tighten that first. Then you can use a pair of pliers to finish it if necessary, and that'll be dependent on the type of water supply line that you have. Some of the newer water supply lines are designed to tighten without any pliers. Now that all my water lines are connected, it's time to turn the water back on. And when you turn your water back on, you wanna be very thorough and check all your connections and make sure nothing's leaking. And if some of your connections are leaking, just try tightening those connections with the pliers to get that leak to stop. And I would like to mention, if the leak is coming from the old water supply line and you can't get that leak to stop, just go ahead and replace that water supply line. They're only about six to 10 bucks and they're usually pretty easy to change out. So good news for me, I don't have any leaks and it's time to move on to a test. So here's a quick look at how it operates. When you turn the pressure knob on, it makes that jet pop out and shoot a stream of water. 
but obviously I'm gonna make a giant mess if I keep testing it like this. So I'm gonna find a clear cover we can put on top of the toilet and do some more testing with. So my wife probably won't like this, but I'm using a clear pot lid here. So there's two different knobs on this bidet. This one here is gonna be for the water pressure. You can adjust this from low to high. Then there's a knob for the nozzle selection. And there's three different cleaning modes. We have the regular cleaning mode, the female rinse, and then the self-cleaning mode. And as long as you already have really good water pressure running to your toilet, the pressure for cleaning on the bidet should be more than adequate. So this is what it looks like on the regular cleaning mode. And here's my nozzle selection. Now I'm gonna turn it to the female setting. So we turn that all the way to the right. A different jet pops out and that's gonna clean more towards the front of the bowl. So that's spraying right here. And if you put that in the middle, it'll actually spray both jets at the same time. And as you can see here, I have really good water pressure, so I've got plenty of cleaning power with this bidet. And here's an up close look at the regular water jet nozzle. And this is the female cleaning nozzle. And now I'm gonna turn on both of them. And if you wanna use the self cleaning mode, just turn the nozzle selection all the way to the right, and that'll start cleaning off the jets in the area around the jets. So that's how it operates. Now I did wanna wait a month before I did this video because I wanted to make sure how well this thing actually worked. Overall, I'm not disappointed. Although there is some things I would like to see a little bit different. I do wish that the construction of this was a little bit more rigid. It does kind of feel cheap and that plastic is somewhat lightweight, but it does seem to function as intended. Now because this is a non-electrical bidet, it does not offer any sort of heated water spray, which is not an issue for me. What I found if the toilet's been sitting there for a while, the water that's in the lines to start with is at room temperature. So when you initially start that spray, it's not that cold. But if you do let that water run for a while, it does start to get a little bit colder. As far as the aim of the spray pattern, you might have to adjust back and forth on the toilet seat to get it to spray the right areas. But it's easy to get used to. One huge plus with this bidet is the amount of toilet paper used is far less. Really, the only thing you have to use toilet paper for is to dab up the moistness caused by the spray. So overall, I'm a satisfied customer and I feel my money has been well spent. Oh, and here's a tip for you. Make sure to keep your legs closed when using this, otherwise it might spray out of the toilet and make a big mess. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is CLS All in One. If you wanna hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And to see more of my videos, just click any of these categories to see more.